I hear a lot among black people that the black man is God and, you know, the black woman is the mother of, the black mother is earth or the black mother is, you know, the mother of all creation or all life. So I just wanted to talk about that for a second. And that's usually among the pro-black community. And a lot of times they'll, they'll disavow religion and they believe religion was made to oppress us and we need to get back to our African roots and relearn our own culture and go back to the things that made us great because Africa before slavery in America or before uh, modern times, Africa was full of mighty nations of people. And we have our, we have our own culture and re religious philosophy and spirituality and that sort of thing. And I would agree with that. I would agree with that part, that there were some wonderful things in African culture that unfortunately were stripped from us when we came here in America. But however, the black man is not God. You know, that's what I want to talk about. But you know what? That's not even what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is that whole belief that is going around now is somehow more closer to what our ancestors believed than, I guess, the quote unquote white religions. And, it, and people seem to think that that's more accurate, meaning that we were oppressed because, and I'm going to show you, a, this is a meme that kind of explains it all that I saw um, online on Facebook. And this meme kind of explains, it sums up the basic attitude that I hear from many like pro blackers or I don't even know the proper word, but just people that, you know, are kind of ant black people that are kind of anti-religion, you know, wow. If they discover that they are gods, we will lose everything. And then, you know, there are people that, uh, you know, they, they actually go out and they evangelize and they make videos and they try to teach people that the black man is God. We are better than them. Black people are better than white people. So, what I wanted, the reason I'm making this video is that that line of thinking doesn't even match with what our ancestors believed. So that's not more um, ethnic or that's not more in line with our African roots or African spirituality at all. This is the top of the uh, stone of the Code of Hammurabi. When he, when King Hammurabi received this revelation, uh, he he wrote down the laws on this stone. It's uh, I think it's like ten feet tall or something, and uh, this is just the top of it. But at the bottom, you see all of the uh, the writing. I don't even know what it's called, but you see all of the writing. But let's take a look at the quote of Hammurabi. I, I was looking at it earlier, and I found this to be very interesting. All right, if I can get this to Please excuse me. All right. So I found this website, sacredtext.com. And I started reading the Code of Hammurabi. This is the, I think it's called a preamble. And it's very difficult to read, to follow, at least this part, because for each person that it names, it describes them. And it kind of, it kind of makes for us. This whole paragraph you see right here is like one sentence. So <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I had to read it several times. But what I wanted to point out, let's look at the Code of Hammurabi. Let's look at the ancient Mesopotamian or the ancient African spirituality. Or Obviously, there were more cultures than this, but this is one of the most prominent. And I just want to show how the whole black man is God ideology is that's actually a new age thing that has nothing to do with African spirituality at all. So let's start reading the Code of Hammurabi. When the king of Anu, the sublime, king of Anunnaki, and Bel, the lord of heaven and earth, who dec decreed the fate of the land, now I'm gonna stop there because see what I'm saying? Like it describes every person, and by the time you get to the subject of the sentence. I don't know, this you kind of can get lost. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to go person by person to show you who these people are. The very first one named, 
I knew the sublime. Let's take a look and let's take a look on Wikipedia and see who that is. I knew is from a Sumerian culture. It is the earliest attested sky fire deity. In Sumerian religion, he was also the king of gods, lord of the constellations. So I'm just going to stop there. I mean, and I'm, let's go back and finish. So Anu is a deity. He is a sky father deity. Let's go back to the court of Hammurabi. So when Anu the sublime, the king of Anunnaki, it, it, this is not a different person. It's saying that Anu is the king of Anunnaki. So let's look at what Anunnaki is. Anunnaki are a group of deities in ancient Mesopotam Mesopotamian cultures. So, Anu is the king of Anunnaki. So, he's the head god of a bunch of gods. Right? So, when Anu, the, the head god of, of this group of gods, and Bel, let's look and see who Bel is. <laughs> it's kind of, maybe actually kind of obvious thought I had it open already. Um, basically, the Bible talks about Baal. It's, it's actually Baal. In, uh, in um, ancient, uh, about to say Egyptian, in ancient Hebrew or Aramaic, ba it, Baal is called Baal. So, if you look here, it says Baal is is a title or me or is a title meaning lord or master? So bell. So it will be like bell and then a place, like bell Peor, the the lord of Peor, or bell Philadelphia, the lord of Philadelphia. And uh, so it would be like saying the god of Egypt or the god of Russia or something like that. But for the head god, oh boy, this is all kind of other stuff. I'm not even going to get into that, but for uh, the head guy, they would just call him Baal or a Lord. Like, you know, there are many gods or there are many lords, but you refer to the one main one. You would refer to him simply as God or the God. So that's what Baal, it would be Baal as in generic or Bell as in generic, but then Bell or Baal as in the real God or the, the higher one. Oh, we didn't even get through the first part of the sentence yet. So when I knew the sublime king of Anunnaki and Baal, the Lord of heaven and earth, it's interesting because the Bible calls Satan Baal. And Baal, the Lord of heaven and of earth, who decreed the fate of the land assigned to Marduk. Let's look and see who Marduk is. Marduk was a late generation god from ancient Mesopotamia and patron deity of the city of Babylon. So Marduk is, and it goes on, you can read more about, I guess like his, what he was, you know, in charge of because most deities apparently had like special powers restricted to certain things. So let's go back to the code. So you got Anu, you got Bel, and you have Marduk. The first three people named in the Code of Hammurabi, before you even get to the laws, they're all deities. They're all gods. So I want to read all of this uh, paragraph. Most of the names, we have already gotten through most of the names. So the rest of it can be kind of straightforward. I'm not going to go any further than this paragraph. So please bear with me. We're not going to read all of this. All right. So I'm sorry. When Anu the sublime, king of Anunnaki, and Bel, the lord of heaven and earth, who decreed the fate of the land, assigned Marduk, the overruling son of Ea, god of righteousness, dominated over earthly man. Now, Ea, I believe, is a place. Let me look. I believe that Ea is a place. Not electronic arts. All right, I'm not going to search for it for the sake of the video, but I believe it's a place. Uh, so anyway, 
the overruling son of EA, God of righteousness, dominant dominion over earthly man, and made him great along the Igigi. I think that's how you say it. So let us look and see what the Igigi is. Now I looked this up earlier, and one thing I noticed that was interesting is oops, not Facebook. One thing I noticed that was interesting is how much of our culture today um, kind of steals names from ancient civilizations and that sort of thing. Because when I Googled Igigi originally, I got all kind of clothing stuff and all kind of modern day products. So anyway, Igigi was a term used for the gods of heaven in Sumerian mythology. Although sometimes synonymous with the term Anunnaki, in one myth, the Agigi were the younger gods who were servants of the Anunnaki until they rebelled and were replaced by the creation of humans. So, let me, let's see which one fits this context. I made him greater money, Agigi. So basically, it's like, I knew the Lord King of the Anunnaki, uh, or the, excuse me, the highest, highest god of the Anunnaki, um, is also the highest god of the Igigi. Because apparently they're the same thing. If they're not the same, they're like the next generation. So he would be above all of them. So when, so Anu and Bel, they gave Marduk, uh, they gave Marduk over, they gave Marduk dominion over earthly man. And they made him great among the other gods. And looking at the third line here. In the middle of the paragraph, I can't write on the screen. Um, they called Babylon by his illustrious name and made it great on earth and founded an everlasting kingdom in it. Hmm. That's interesting. Whose foundations were laid so solidly as those of heaven and earth. Meaning that no one can ruin that, uh, that kingdom. Then Anu and Bel called by name me, Hammurabi. The exalted prince who feared God to bring about the rule of righteousness in the land to destroy the wicked and the evildoers so that the strong should not harm the weak so that I should rule over the black headed people like Shemesh and enlighten the land to further the well-being of mankind. So <clears throat> it's a bunch of names here. So basically, I knew the head God and Bel, the Lord of heaven and earth, they gave Marduk power over humans. Marduk, let me see. Wait, wait, they gave Marduk power of over humans. Then Anu and Bel called Hammurabi to bring about the rule of righteousness in the land to destroy the wicked and the evildoers and for him to rule over the black-headed people. So, and some other stuff too. I'm not trying to skip those. So basically, Hammurabi was saying that the authority he got was from the highest gods, the gods of heaven and earth. And they called him to rule over the black people, to protect them and to flourish them. Now, I'm just going to stop there. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Um, at least not in this video. It, it is interesting though. But this is part of the ancient culture that the pro-black anti-religion people say that we need to go back to. How is this any less religious than Christianity or Islam or Judaism or anything else? Buddhism. How is this any less religious? This is not less religious. If anything, it's, it's just polytheism. Now, I'm not saying... You know, I don't believe that in this stuff because I'm a monotheist. So, but my, the point of this video was not to attack those beliefs. It's just to say that the whole black man is God and, you know, we don't need a God. We can worship ourselves. That doesn't even match with what your ancestors taught that you, that people say that we need to get back to. So you're not only, con you're contradicting them. The whole, uh. Black man is God, or I am my own God. That's a new age philosophy. In fact, that is that is a satanic philosophy. That is a philosophy. It started in the Garden of Eden. When Satan said, has God really said? 
And Adam and Eve, he asks Edom, Eve, has God really said you cannot eat of the eat of the tree? And let's just look that up because I can't type in. <laughs> has God given? Wow, I can't type and talk at the same time apparently. So I gotta do one. And let's read what Satan says in the Bible to Eve. Oh, I don't like the sites. Too many words. Too many different. Uh, let me go to something else. Bear with me here. Oh, come on, hurry up. All right. Genesis 3, I guess. That's him. Okay. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat of any tree, eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, nor touch of it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, the whole thing, like, the, the whole thing about, um, being like God, that goes back to Satan. Like the whole I am the whole movement now of I'm my own God. People think that they're kind of making up their own thing and they're creating their own lane. You're not. You're not. I mean, Mormonism teaches that Mormonism teaches that the God of our earth now, Elohim, used to be a man. And through being uh through I guess living, I don't want to say perfect, but living the a good life or living like the best type of life he evolved and became a god so that's what mormonism teaches um who knows what else teaches you have like pantheism which is like god is in everything and god is everything that sort of thing like that so those who believe that those who believe that uh they are their own God and that sort of thing. You're not creating anything new. And furthermore, you're actually not. Where is it? Oh, I closed my link. Great. I got to find it. Code of Hammurabi. Um, you're not creating anything new. You're, And uh, I lost my train of thought. Please forgive me. You're just like you're 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 being just as religious as the people that. You kind of criticize and you want to separate yourself from you're just creating a different religion and that's not where i was at but i just wanted to show y'all sacred text there you go so i'm pretty much done please forgive my stumbling over my words and that sort of thing i'm not the best at making these videos but here's the quote of hammurabi let me save it because I want to finish reading this. And again, I don't bring this up to bash um, ancient culture or ancient African culture or anything like that. My whole point of this video right now is that what you say, number one, the whole black man is God and, and you know, we're our own God. We reject religion. We need to get back to our ancient African spirituality. It just doesn't make sense in the light of just looking at one thing, the Code of Hammurabi. Like, just looking at this one thing, it's just as religious as any of the religions today that you are against. Furthermore, you have a man saying that he received revelation from God that he needed that he should rule over black people. So, I don't even know if he's black. I'm assuming he's black. But, uh, you know, that just shows my ignorance on the subject. But it's like if a white person had said that, you would, you would reject it right away. Ain't no God going to give you no power to rule over black people. But you see right here in our ancient Mesopotamian, our, you see here in, in, in what our ancestors believed and what, and what they taught. They taught the same thing. So, I don't know. I think people should actually read about ancient African civilizations and 
religions and all of that and what they taught instead of just talking about it like it's so much better. Like, you you know, ancestor worship is real. And people tend to exalt our ancestors and make them seem like they were so awesome. And I'm sure that there were a lot of things that were so awesome about them, but there were some bad things too. And they were human like us. So what are the negative aspects of human nature that are present now would have been present in them. But people seem, people tend to romanticize them and make them out to be so different. You know, like, oh, I wish we'd get back to the good old days and we didn't have Christianity or Islam or we didn't have the white man oppressing us and we didn't have all of these evil influences and we were a thriving kingdom. Well, I guarantee we, if you actually really research those things, you'll find out that a lot of the same stuff went on in these ancient civilizations that go on today, like slavery, like uh, child sacrifice, rape, all that stuff. Those same things went on then. Now, I'm not saying that we should not learn about our history. In our, and, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't learn about it, but we should view whatever we learn through the proper lens and with the proper amount of respect. Not dismissing those things, but also at the same time, not exalting them higher than something that higher than what they ought not be. And just look at the code of hammer. I didn't even get to the laws yet. I didn't even get through. I got through one paragraph, like maybe one fourth or one fifth of the preamble where he's just saying why he's making these laws. And you have. One God, two God, you have one God over a group of gods and another God giving power to another God. And then the two top gods call Hammurabi to lead the black people, to rule the black people. So just listen to that. That's not religious. That's spiritual. It's religious. It may be true. It may not be true. But it's just as religious as what you see today. And secondly, this proves that black, the whole black man is God thing. Our ancestors didn't even believe that themselves. So I, I really encourage the people who really have a desire for learning about African culture and that sort of thing. Read about it. Don't just go by memes. Don't just go by common things that you hear so much that you just kind of believe it because that's human nature we all tend to do that i encourage you to actually go back take the time and read this stuff so that you can at, at least understand the stuff that you're promoting and and that's all i have to say so if you watched it for this this long i appreciate your patience and i you know just think about what i said and if you agree or disagree or whatever feel free to let me know.